The test is in four part, part 1, part 2, part 3, and part 4. Now look at part 1. Part 1 there will be time for you to read the instructions and questions, and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only, and you will hear a conversation between two people talking about insecticide. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Yes? Oh, good morning, madam. I'm from Pest Away Market Research. I'm doing consumer research in this area. I wonder if you'd mind telling me, do you use Pest Away in your home? Pest Away? Oh, the insecticide thing. Well, yes, as a matter of fact, I do. What do you use it for, madam? Fleas, ants, cockroaches, woodworm? Oh, cockroaches. This is an old house, you see, and we often get cockroaches in the kitchen. I tried scrubbing and disinfecting, but it didn't seem to do much good. And then I heard a commercial about Pest Away, so I thought I'd try that. Was that on TV? No, it was radio, one of those early morning shows. You heard it advertised on the radio? Fine. And you say you use it in the kitchen. Do you use it anywhere else in the house? In the bathroom, say? Oh, no. We've never had any trouble anywhere else. We get the odd wasp in the summer sometimes, but I don't bother about them. It's the cockroaches I don't like. Nasty, creepy, crawly things. And you find Pest Away does the trick? Well, yes, it's quite good. It gets rid of most of them. How long have you been using it, madam? Oh, let's see. About two years now, I think. About two years. And how often do you find you have to spray? Oh, I give the kitchen a good spray round the skirtings and under the stove, you know, about every six weeks. Every six weeks or so, I see. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. About every six weeks. Every six weeks or so, I see. Uh, where do you buy your pest away, madam? A supermarket? Chemist? Oh, no. I get it at the little shop at the end of this street. They stock practically everything. It means taking a bus if I want to go to the supermarket. Well, thank you very much, madam. Oh, could I have your name, please? Mrs. Edgerton. Mary Edgerton. That's E-G-E-R-T-O-N. E-G-E-R-T-O-N. And the address? The address is 12 Holly, Peterford. 12 Peterford. And may I ask your age, madam? Oh, well, just put down I'm over 50. As you like, Mrs. Egerton. And occupation? Housewife? Well, I used to be a telephonist before I married. I had a very good job at the post office, but what with a husband to look after and four children to bring up, it doesn't leave you much time, does it? Occupation, housewife. Well, thank you very much for your time, madam. You've been most helpful. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now it turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a conversation between a student and an accommodation officer. First, look at questions eleven to fourteen. Listen carefully. Well, you have left things a bit late. Have you tried looking for somewhere in Newbridge? Newbridge? No, I haven't. I've never heard of Newbridge. Well, let me show you. I've got a map here. Here's where everything is. You come into Newbridge over the bridge, and the main road in front of you is surprisingly enough the High Street. This is one of the main streets. Hmm. And branching off to the left, you can see there is West Street. That is another busy part of town. I see. Now, as I was saying, here is the High Street, and here is West Street going left. Now, if you go along West Street, the first place you come to on your right is the supermarket. It's not a very big one, but it's got most things you're likely to need. Next to it. There's the old town hall. I say the old town hall because it is about a hundred years old, but it will soon make way for a car park. I'm afraid. I suppose the car is king. Now, opposite the supermarket is the railway station. You can get very frequent buses and trains from here into the university. And next to that is the sports centre. It's a brand new one and was built on the site of some tennis courts. So that's progress. <laughs> It's got everything the keen sportsman like yourself might require. Now that's the centre of town, and I want to point out to you the buildings opposite the supermarket, but on the other side of London Road. There are two buildings there. The one further away from the High Street is called the Heights, and the one nearer the High Street is called the Towers. What are they? They are where you could find a flat. One of them, the Heights, has a number of flats for rent at the moment. Oh, good. Look at questions fifteen to twenty. You will now listen to the second part of the talk. Now the first one is flat four. That's a nice flat with a balcony, and you need to apply to the Newbridge Accommodation Agency to ask about that one. You'll find their number in the phone book. Number six is another nice one which has been empty for a while, and you can ring the owner directly. I think. Yes, I've got her number written here. There it is. Right. Thank you. Good. Now, number eight is a re-advertisement. Ah,、uh, what do you mean? Well, it did have a tenant, but now it is for rent again. So I'd like to ask about that one. Leave it with me, and I'll look into it for you. Then we can talk about it when I've got more information. Okay. Are there others in this block? Yes. There's number ten. Now, this one's a bit strange. It's advertised with an agency as well as privately in the local paper. Normally, if it's advertised through an agency, you shouldn't really go behind the agency and go directly to the owner. But on this occasion, I suggest you just answer the advert here in the newspaper, which the owner has obviously put in. Okay. Finally, there is number fourteen. This is with the New Start Agency. This is an agency started by the girl who was my assistant here, and she left to make money for herself. So she's not my favourite person, but I'm afraid I would have to advise you to go through the agency anyway. Again, their number is in the phone book.
All right, is that something for you to be starting with? That's great.、Uh, but、uh, what kind of place is Newbridge? It's a nice place. It was developed about a hundred years ago, really for people who worked in the factories around there. They were clothing factories, and everyone worked in them: men, women, boys, and girls. Then, when the factories closed down, things got very difficult for the town. There was a huge amount of unemployment until a few years ago, when, in the telecoms boom, a company making mobile phones started up. I think your phone was made in Newbridge, and now this company employs most of the people in the town. There are new housing estates on the edge of the town, but they're mostly occupied by young families, and there isn't much student accommodation there. Most flats and so on are in the centre. That sounds good. Well, let me know how you get on. Yes, of course.、Uh, thank you. Bye. Bye. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear the overseas student officer talking to some new students about the arrangements for an excursion to Ironbridge. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-five. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-five. Hello, everyone. My name is Pamela Sutcliffe, and most of you already know that I am the overseas student officer here at Salopian Technical College. Next Tuesday, the twenty-eighth of September. We have arranged an excursion for all new students to the important historical town of Ironbridge. We are hoping you'll all come, because not only is the history of Ironbridge very important and interesting, but also an excursion like this is a relaxed and fun way to get to know each other. Ironbridge is about fifty-five kilometers from here. And we'll be travelling by the college bus, which holds forty people. If there are more than that, we'll bring a couple of staff cars as well. Though I might ask you to indicate on the list if you have a car and would be willing to take a couple of passengers. The list I'm referring to is up there on the student notice board. And if you would like to come on Tuesday, would you please add your name as soon as possible? By the way, could you please print your name clearly? I know some people have wonderful signatures, but often I'm afraid I can't read them, which can cause problems. So, if we need extra transport and you could bring your car, can you tick the car column next to your name? Could you also add your student number and your telephone number? Just in case there are any last-minute changes and we have to contact you. The other information I need to give you is about lunch. There's a very nice little restaurant in Ironbridge, which gives a 15% discount to the college when we bring groups. That means lunch is only about four pounds, and they do good vegetarian meals too. So it's usually no problem for those of you on special diets. But if you prefer to eat your own food, that's fine too, either on the bus or in the park. But I'd encourage you to try the restaurant. Now, talking of costs, 
I should tell you that the bus will only cost you ten pounds, and if you bring your car, we'll pay for the petrol. So you get a free trip in return for driving there. Will you please sign up by Saturday at six p.m. at the latest? The list is closed after that. We will depart at nine thirty a.m. sharp on Tuesday morning. So please make sure that you arrive at least fifteen minutes before, so that you can find a seat and get settled on the bus. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions twenty-six to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-six to thirty. The college bus garage is behind the engineering workshop. It's quite easy to find. If you come here to the student union building, then walk east down the avenue until you get to the childcare centre on your left, and then turn left. And walk past the sports centre and the tennis courts, which are both on your left. Cross over Central Square, and opposite you is the engineering workshop. Walk around the back, and you'll see the bus. Please wear comfortable shoes, as we'll be walking around Ironbridge and be on our feet for most of the day. Wear a warm jacket. And you might like to bring an umbrella and a backpack to put them in if the weather's warm and sunny, which we hope it will be. But of course, we can't guarantee that. Certainly, bring your cameras and any snacks or drinks for the bus journey there and back, which should take about an hour and a half each way. You should all check the notice board on Monday, and we'll also put a note in your mailbox to confirm arrangements. So don't forget to check it. Now, why are we visiting Ironbridge? Well, Ironbridge, as the name suggests, has got the original iron bridge. That is the first ever iron bridge in the world. It was the birthplace of the Industrial Revolution, and for forty years it led the world. As Britain changed from an agricultural society into an industrial one. It's hard to imagine today that this pretty, sleepy little tourist town was one of the most important places in England for over a century. Just imagine, two hundred years ago, people from all over Europe and even North America came to Ironbridge to learn about what was then the latest technology. Today, it is listed as a World Heritage Site by the United Nations. As they consider the unique collection of industrial monuments, rank it alongside the Grand Canyon, the pyramids, and the Great Barrier Reef. One place that's fun to visit is Blist Hill, which is a reconstruction of a small Victorian industrial town where people are working and living as they did a hundred years ago. I hope you'll enjoy the day. It's been a very popular excursion in previous years, so I'm looking forward to going again next Tuesday. Now, don't forget to put your name on the list as soon as possible. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. 
First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good afternoon everybody. My name is Sally Miller and I'm here to offer you some advice on legal matters whilst you are studying at this university. Happily, most international students complete their courses without running into any serious legal problems. But if you do find yourself involved in a legal dispute of any kind, ask for help. There are two options. First, contact the student's union or welfare officer. Even if they cannot help you directly, they should be able to advise you where to go for help. The second possibility is to contact the Citizens Advice Bureau in your area. You can find them in the local telephone directory. They will be able to recommend a solicitor if you need one and tell you if there is a local law centre providing free legal advice. They will also be able to tell you whether you can claim legal aid to help pay for any court and legal fees. Let me give you some basic information about the police. The police have the power to stop and search anyone who appears to be behaving in a suspicious manner. If you are arrested for any reason, even if you know it to be a wrong reason, remember a few very important things. One don't be aggressive. 2. Do not try to bribe the police officer. 3. If you are arrested by plain clothes police officers, ask to see some form of identification. 4. Give your true name and address if the officer asks you to. Lying to the police is a criminal offence. 5. Do not sign any statement until you have received advice from a solicitor. There is always a solicitor on duty at every police station. 6. You will be entitled to make one telephone call. If you use this call to telephone a friend, urge your friend to contact someone from your university or from the student's union and get advice about what you should do next. If you find yourself in trouble with the police, it is very important to get professional advice. Contact any of the following. Your university welfare officer, the students union at your university, your local citizens advice bureau, a local law centre. If you are found guilty of an offence, it could seriously damage your position as an international student. So be sure to ask for help as early in the process as possible. Remember, obey the local laws. The laws here may not be quite the same as in your own country. Here are a few examples of actions that are illegal here. It is against the law to possess offensive weapons. For example, knives, guns, chemical sprays used for personal defence. Even women are not allowed to carry sprays or other deterrents to protect themselves against possible assault, except for rape alarms possess or supply hard or soft drugs, disturb the peace. This is called disorderly conduct. This means that you can be arrested for being too noisy or rowdy. A few words about drinking. In this country, it is perfectly acceptable for adults to drink alcohol in moderate amounts. For many people, drinking is an established part of their social life. Going out for a drink is how they relax or spend time with friends. If you go to a party or visit people at home in the evening, your host will probably offer you a drink. Often a lot of university social life can revolve around drinking, especially for undergraduates. Do not be surprised if people arrange to meet in a bar or if events are held in a pub. But you are not obliged to drink alcohol if you do not want to. 
even if you are in a pub or at a party where everyone else is drinking, you can always ask for a non-alcoholic drink instead. And if you feel uncomfortable going to places that serve alcohol, explain this to your friends. There are lots of other places where you can meet. If you do choose to drink, remember that you should never drive a motor vehicle after drinking alcohol. It is dangerous and the police can impose serious penalties on you. Also, remember that being drunk in public is not acceptable either and the police can arrest you for it. Drugs and alcohol can cause serious problems. Let me repeat that in this country it is illegal to use drugs except under medical supervision. But if you do use illegal drugs and you develop a problem, there are organisations you can contact. Contact your student's union or your student counsellor. Anyone over 18 years old can legally buy and consume alcoholic drinks in this country. But if you think you might be drinking too much, get help and advice from your student counsellor or your doctor. Again, there are special organisations that can help you with drug and alcohol problems. Contact them. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. is the end of the test. You now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to your IELTS listening answer sheet.